Hi, it's Kim. Thanks for visiting today. Don't you love the way these mountains look with all the little crevices and all the plants growing in them, even the flowers? How about we make one, make it in miniature, out of hypertufa? Here we go. Well, today, I want to make a hypertufa pot, so I have got to choose a mold. So I keep my molds here on these shelves. I am not sure of the size that I want. I think I would like a really large one. Oops. This is a giant box that I could use pretty big and pretty deep. That's a possibility. I would also like to make one like this. This has a nice textured side, and I think I'd like to try it too. So I'm not sure what I'll end up with. I could use this one. I could use a giant round one. These are just near the same size, but I don't know. I may test this one to see exactly how much I need. This is a really big one too. You can see how big that is. Okay, big tub. The thing that I mix cement in is really big, but I'm not sure. I think I may lean toward this size or that size. Just not sure the amount of ingredients I'll need. So that'll be my next problem. I have my ingredients here in the cans. So we won't bother going through the mixing and measuring. I'll just start with the placing it inside the trough. So I've got the decision made <clears throat> and we're going to go ahead and try to get everything mixed up here and get a new hypertufa pot made and show it on video. Here we go. So now we're just going to mix them all together and hope that this is the amount that it's needed to make that big bowl.
Okay, we've got that all mixed up and it's all ready. I use most of a gallon of water. Ooh, very, very heavy. So it's got to kind of set aside to be ready. And then here is my bowl that we're going to work on. Now this has a nice slanted side, so I'm just going to spray it with Pam. I think this should work. So I've got this well coated, and we're just going to start. I'm going to put my mixture in. Now you can line this with plastic if you want. I typically do, but in this instance, I'm just not going to. And going to ruin the shirt, but now I'm just going to take the consistency of my tufa and mush it down into the bottom. You can see how that's going to pack. Now, some people work on putting in their drain holes on the side. I'm an after driller. So that's typically how I roll with this. Now, I'm just going to pull it toward the sides. You can see where I made a hole in the bottom? Well, that's where you keep kind of swiveling. And then later, you'll form the bottom. Keep it packed real nice. And I guess the amount of hypertufa I have made so far is going to decide on how much, what the size of my pot is. I'm getting, it's getting pretty sparse in this dish. Let me pull this over into here. You can see how much I have left for my sides. We're going to see how far this is going to go. And there we go. It's empty. Now let me show you Pressing, uh, the shirt's gone, but I like to protect my arms from the substances in the tufa. I uh, hope my arms aren't getting in the way. So you can see how thick that is and how much And 
I'm going to just kind of level off the top for the rustic edge. And as I press, you can see how it swells up against the side. <clears throat> now if I had another pot that would perfectly fit down into this, that would be perfect. But I think we can just use a piece of plastic down in here. See how thick these sides are? That, in my opinion, is just a little bit too thick in this spot right here. So I'll just keep trying to press around. But you can see how I still have, I don't know, a good half inch bottom, which is adequate. Now it can be more if you want it to be more. Just let a little of it slump down in. I think this is going to work just about right. Work the sides. All right, let me try this. Another giant tufa bowl. I'm not sure it'll fit down in there. Then again, that might be just right for an inner side. So let me kind of work with that a little to get my bottom real well made. Okay. Now, I will take this and I'll spray the bottom of it. You could even coat that with plastic if you want to. I'll press that. And then I can work on the sides to be just about as even as I can get them. We got a really, really rainy day here. And so I've gone out and filled up some of my water buckets outside in the rain but I don't know what do you think about that I want to pull him out oh yeah that's a nice deep one for me
once I even out these sides a little, I think we're just about ready. Okay, now that we've got it all ready, and I think I've got the sides as easy, even as I like, I need to put it into a big garbage bag. So we're going to pick this up, very, very heavy, and we'll slide it into a garbage bag, or wrap it in plastic if you don't have a large enough 
garbage bag. All right, let's see if we can slide this into a big garbage bag. Pull your heavy um, container to the side and then just kind of work your bag over it if you get it big enough. Now this particular bag is a 32 gallon one and so I'm going to just use that to tie it. So let me back it up just a hair. You can see we're going to secure the ends together and since everything has a weird different shape, this will just at least keep it an airtight tent for it to cure. And then we're going to set it aside over here. Okay, we've lifted it from the table. And I put it down here on the floor next to my shelves. So we got a giant wrapped Hypertufa bowl. And that's its size. So we'll hope after, I'm going to say two, possibly even three days, I'm going to leave it there. It's very humid, and there's a lot of moisture in the basement anyway, even though we do run the humidifier. I think it might take that long, but that'll be a long cure, um, first cure. So we're going to check back in a little bit to see how everything works out. Meanwhile, I'll put the noisy dehumidifier back on. And we're good to go for this segment. Okay, what we're gonna do today is take our Hypertufa bowl out of its mold. And this particular bowl is going to be kind of a real shallow saucer. And as you can see, it's dried out pretty well. There's still a lot of moisture collecting. I don't know if it's detailed enough for you to see the droplets of water that are down in there. But since it's still pretty much alkalined up, I'm going to put my gloves in to handle it. Okay. And I guess basically I'm just going to try to turn it upside down. Hope it doesn't fall out on me. came loose, and there we go. There's a smooth texture right out of the mold. You can see it kind of has that new, fresh look. And it's still very, very heavy. But that is what we've come up with. I'm going to have a real shallow bowl that I can mound up and plant probably full of hens and chicks or maybe my sedum emigruntion. I think this would make a nice huge bowl. Now this may or may not be my splash guard for the front. I just have to kind of test and see just exactly how this will work for that splash guard out front. But what I'll do is use my rasp to kind of shape up the sides so that I get a little bit of a rounded edge here. I don't like to have the real sharp edge on the sides. So I'll round it off. And that's basically all that's going to be needed on this. I'll drill one big drain hole here in the center. We'll take care of that. And then I'm just going to go ahead and set it outside in the rains and in the suns. And I'll probably 
plant it up in about a week or so. But we'll continue when I'm ready for that stage. See how nice this has turned out? I think it's made a really nice shallow hypertufa pot, perfect for a crevice garden. Now I did replace it back inside the bag and I'm allowing it to cure for about 10 more days on the basement floor. You can put yours outside, just be sure to put it in the shade. Be sure to join me next video for planting this crevice garden. And thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe.